Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and I am here with God's Church of Love online, our regular Saturday service at 1215 Pacific. So listen, what I want you to hear is this message. We just went through everybody trying to figure out the definition of the word sift. And I want you to hear the one sentence. I read the, the, the text, but I just want you to hear the one sentence. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now, we were, everybody was trying to, you know, figure out what the word sift means. We just got through with that, so y'all missed out. Sorry, I didn't record it. But anyway, so this is what happens. Sifting, as Andrea talked about with gold, you shake up this thing with like, like a, 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 it looks like a plate, like a pie plate almost. And it's got, I mean, you shake it up and it's, it's got like little, uh, little minute holes in them. It's almost like a strainer. And you shake, 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 shake. And you get through shaking. And the, the dirt falls through the little fine openings. But the gold remains. Hmm. Will you remain? All right. Then, sifting wheat. They have this big, gigantic thing they hold in both hands. And they shake it up. And they plop it up in the air. And, and it's like the, sh the chaff, I believe, blows away in the wind. But the wheat lands. So the, the wheat is what remains. The chaff is blown away. That's what Jesus talks about when he says when judgment comes, he's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. So what I want to ask you as believers, are you wheat? Or are you chaff? Because even if you're wheat now, when the nitty gritty hits the fan in the last days, you may end up choosing to be chaff. Hmm. Yeah, hard to believe, huh? But we're entering some scary times. It's scary to think of the changes that are happening in our society. It's scary to think of the standards that are flipped upside down, right being called wrong, and wrong being called right. That's scary. It's scary to, to think of the long-term and short-term ramifications and consequences of the laws we're passing. Hmm. It's really scary. So I want you to think as you pray, watch and pray. You must think. you got to use your mind now. And you've got to line it up with the word of God. Because if you don't, some of you, we were talking earlier about the possible mark of the beast and how they're combining elect, um, technology with bodies. You have to know what choice are you going to make. If they tell you, if you let us put this thing inside of you, you'll be able to walk. You may not have walked for 30 years, but the thought of it, you'll be able to walk. Oh my goodness, it's like miracles on top of miracles. No, it's technology. But you'll see it as a miracle. You'll see it as an opportunity. Well, I mean, who would, who would refuse the opportunity to walk? Because there'll be a robotic control over you, an override. It will override your will. Hmm. It will override your moral standings. But are you willing to cast all that aside to get out of that chair and walk? Are you willing to cast that aside to open your eyes and see? Think about it. What price are you willing to pay? What price will you be willing to pay when food gets slim? 
when the laws start to get hard on Christians and we start to get persecuted and imprisoned and whatever else they'll do, what will happen to your resolve? Hmm, think about that. It's a very scary time. Some of you don't do pain. The first sign of pain, hey, give me the pen, I'll sign. Just give me the mark. Some of you, the first sign of any kind of trial or trouble, and you're ready to turn tail and run. You don't turn to God. You run from God and turn to the system so your life can be more comfortable. But that's here and now. The sad part is when you sign on the dotted line and you yield your body to their technology, there's no point of return. Because now your will is being over, you, there's override for your will, which means even if you want to go back to God, they can click a switch or send an impulse and you don't even know who God is. The Bible says you will, once you accept the mark of the beast, you will not be able, not at all. You will not be able to change your mind, repent, do anything. You're locked in throughout eternity. Now, when Satan comes to sift you as wheat, some of you are easy, easy targets, really easy. Why? Because you got the hots. You got the hots for him and you got the hots for her and you got the hots for them and you got the hots for that and you got the hots for those for those gambling joints. You got the hots for those bottles. You got the hots for getting high. You got the hots. You got the hots for all these movies. Ooh, Beyonce. Oh, I mean, you got the hots. You're an easy play for the, for, for the enemy. All he's got to do is keep you entertained. And you're a goner. You're a goner. What if God says to you one day, from this day on, you will never look at a TV program. You get rid of your television. What if he tells you that? What if he requires that of you? Because he knows that there's going to be some witchcraft coming through the TV that will easily affect you because you're already brainwashed and programmed by the media. And God says, turn your TV off. What are you going to do? Oh, no. I can't give up my reality shows. Oh, no. I've got to see this one and that one. Oh, they're my favorite. Really? See, this country always looks at other countries and their idol worship. We look at how they look at their idols and they bow and they've got a thousand or a million gods for every little aspect of life. And you think, oh, isn't that funny? Isn't that cute? But what's your idol? I don't have an idol. I'm a, I'm in a civilized. Oh yeah. Yeah, that idiot box is the idol of America. Hollywood is an idol. Think about it. Musicians are idols. You will you will go over river and dale through fire and smoke and all kind of stuff to get to see uh, a, an entertainer live. But your mother tried to get you to go to church. <laughs> whatever or try to get you to sit with some Christians having dinner really <laughs> yeah like I want to do some mess like that I got something to do tonight go on keep on doing baby see many of you are easy targets some of you think you believe in God but you're so caught up in Psychic this, tarot cards that. And, oh, I mean, you got so many things you're dabbling in. 
Well, it's white magic. There's no harm in white magic. Besides, I'm a Christian witch. Yeah, yeah, say that if you want. Many shall come to me saying, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this and haven't I done that? What will Jesus say? And, and I will say to, to them, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Whoops, there it is. Now, what are you going to do about that? Hmm, because you chose another system to abide by. Hmm? You chose astrology to make your, to chart your course by. Yeah, astrology. You chose tarot cards to consult with. You chose your bedside lover to set the course for your life. You gonna be my woman. You gonna do this. If you really are in my corner, if you're there for me, you really love me, you do what I need you to do. Mm hmm. Go on and be their puppet all you want. You're gonna be the devil's patsy when you enter eternity. See, we don't realize how all the different ways that Satan will sift us as we, if we're not careful. You have to be very careful because the ones Satan's going to come after the hardest are those powerful ones. Uh-huh. I mentioned this yesterday on the phone. Some of the most powerful weapons in God's hands, weapons of mass destruction, Satan will try to neutralize in the New York minute. He will hound you and harass you and do whatever he can. If you ain't taking the authority you need, baby, it's going to be a while before you get rid of them little boogers. Because the whole purpose, the whole purpose is to wear out the saints. That's according to the Old Testament. Wear out the saints. You wear the saints out, boy, the saints just, you know, they just get too tired to be bothered. And they start giving in to a lot of things that they normally would not because they don't feel like fighting anymore. Yeah, we don't realize how God works for us and how Satan works against us. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about it. When Satan comes to sift you as we, what will work on you? When Satan comes to sift you, what's your weak spot? Time to make a list and check it twice, baby. What's your weak spot? Mm -hmm. I know what mine is, and I'm working on it. I'm working hard on it. I want to. I want to be. I want to be so squeaky clean that I know my righteousness is still as filthy rags because we all fall short continually. But I don't want to have a lot to contend with. I want to just have a few chosen things to have to struggle with and deal with them because I, I tried to handle as much as I could while I could. I got a lot of imperfections. There are some things I don't involve myself with, some conversations I won't engage in because I know where my weakness is. I know where my temper can fly off. And I always ask the Lord to keep a warning signal in me, a warning device that will keep me at, at the right level. Because no matter who you think you are, you jacked up, toe up from the floor up. But for the grace of God. So you got to constantly lean on God's grace. If, you're, if you get backed up against the wall, you may have to run from your job. You may have to 
grab all your money and take it out of the bank. There are so many choices you may have to make that you never thought you'd ever have to do. The reason I'm saying that is because with us not knowing what's coming, okay, we're not knowing what's going on or what's coming. We see the signs on the wall. That's good. We're at least being watchful and prayerful. That's good. But some of you, you're not consulting with the Lord. You're consulting with witchcraft. You're not consulting with God. You're consulting with your buddies down the street. You're not consulting with God. You're consulting with your own appetites. They dictate what you do and what you spend your money on. When God could be telling you, store up 100 gallons of water, distilled water. Store up top things like top ramen and oatmeal, split pea soup. Hmm. I'm talking life uh, sh sh with things that have shelf lives of five or, or three or four years or five years, whatever. Long shelf lives. So you need to be consulting with God now. Now is the time to start. Really consult with God. Pray to God. Read his word. Constantly read revelations from chapter 13 to chapter 19. You got to read that if you don't read anything else. The reason I say that is because that is a total picture of what's coming. Total picture of what's coming. But if you're not reading, if you're not watching, I did a whole, the Lord led me, well, what was it? I think in 2017. So many of y'all, I'm going to say this real quick. This is a quick aside. Many of you aren't even getting notifications that I'm doing videos. But right now I'm at 1,700 plus. I've been doing videos. I just didn't this week because I was sick. Was, past tense. Now, what I want to tell you is, I did a video in 2017. The Lord led me to do this, and it scared me. It sobered me. I actually had to get the cry out before I read the scriptures. And even while I was reading the scriptures, I was crying through some of it because it was so scary. <sighs> he had me read for the first time in my life chapters on one video. Revelations chapter 13 to Revelations chapter 19. All the way through. I wasn't told to preach. Just read that word. I did a little small commentary at the beginning and I just got right into reading. And I'm telling you, <clears throat> it scared me. As I read about Mystery Babylon, I thought of America. And I was in my spirit, God, please don't let it be us, please. It just seems like there's some really horrible things about to happen. And we're tiptoeing through the tulips, playing with our little, um, our little selfies and playing with our little computer games and we're watching our little spooky movies and we're doing, we're watching our little favorite musicians and with our little singers and yeah, we're having fun. We're so dummy down, it's ridiculous. When are you going to wake up? Some of you are being sifted right now by Satan and you don't even know it. Better wake up, y'all. As Joel chapter 2 says, Call for the priests and the, all, all these guys, the mothers, the fathers, the wives, the husbands, the children. Have them fast. Call for solemn assembly. It's not party time right now. Things are coming, y'all. Okay, I got my composure. Now, this is what I want you to do. 
I want you to start really getting into your word. I want some of you to consider going on little one or two day fasts. Turn off the television. Turn off your cell phone. Conversations can wait sometimes, you know. You need to hear what God is saying. I need to hear what God is saying. We all need to do this. I'm not telling you to do something that I like. Huh, this is for y'all, not me. No, that's a lie. It's for me too. This is time to really buckle down and get in God's face because he can prepare you if you take the time. Jesus says, if you have an ear, those who have an ear to hear, listen. I'm not trying to do scare tactics. I'm not trying to be a fear monger. But if the house is on fire, it's not time to watch TV. Wow. Okay. I'm not exactly sure where else God's going to take this or if I'm done. So I ask you, Lord, to let me know. Okay, some of you, thank you, Lord. Some of you have been walking with the Lord for a while. And you think that God is passive about some of the things you've been allowing in your life. Because it's not a big deal. <laughs> this is where we weaken our resolve. Have you ever heard that a, a group is no stronger than their weakest link. Hmm. Now, if you got too many weak links in your in your fence, your fence is not going to be much of a protection, is it? Some of you have so many weak links in your lives because you dabble here and you toy there and you tinker over over there, and you think it's okay because it's not a big deal. Some of you think it's not a big deal to not watch what comes out of your mouth. You say four-letter words, three-letter words, and five-letter words in general conversation. Think nothing of it. If it's borderline, I don't want it coming out of my mouth. Because even if it's not, I refuse to let any of Satan's form of communication to come through my mouth. We all slip from time to time. But I'm talking big slip, like you just bash something and it's like, ah. Oh. Sometimes I learn to just grunt, ah, holler, whatever, to stop from uttering even anything close to a cuss word. No, my mouth is an oracle of God. I'm not going to mix oracle with doo-doo. Satan's doo-doo mixed with God's oracle? How do you expect God's anointing coming out of that? That's a weak link right there. Here's another weak link. Some of y'all dress like floozies. Men and women. Some of y'all men look like, oh my goodness, you look like you're trying to sell some booty on the street. Your pants are so tight. Nobody has to measure anything. It's right there in the open. You might as well take them off, drop them, and let it whip in the wind. What's that about? Why do you women have to wear 10 inches of cleavage? You that desperate for some guy's attention? What's up with it? The Bible's principle is modesty. See, these are all the little weak, weak links where you think, oh, that's not a big deal. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's the way they dress now. They. The Bible says, be ye separate. Oh, okay. Some of you allow your attitudes. Mm, mm, mm. I'm not going to go into detail. I've dealt with attitudes for too many years and too many videos. Y'all look back on them videos back to 2014. 
I don't have time to cover all that attitudes do. But you have got to get control of your attitude, your tempers. You got to get control of those. God says, he says, forsake wrath. He didn't say give place to it. He said, forsake it. See, those are weak links, weak links. Well, you know, uh-uh, no, you ain't talking to me like that. Well, guess what? You want to bear fruit or not? If they talk to you like that, what have you lost? Your dignity? That ain't nothing but pride, baby. Kick it to the curb. You don't have time for that. Get yourself caught up in a trick bag over some feeling. This is not the day and age to give in to stupid stuff. And we always want to do it because our flesh, like, you know, I used to, I spent half my life asking, why is it that everything that's good for you tastes bad? And everything that's bad for you, that's harmful, tastes wonderful. Well, it hit me just last week after all these years. Right after my 66th birthday, it hit me. It's because our flesh, we were born in sin. We were shapen in iniquity. And our flesh longs for everything that is diametrically opposed to God. Everything good. Everything wholesome. Everything healthy. All that's boring. Boring. That's what we think. And that's the way we feel. So that's why good foods taste bad and bad foods taste great. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. That's why you have to pull your spirit under subjection to the Holy Spirit. All those little weak links, all that you could have done for God, you can't do. Why? You're too busy taking care of all the illnesses from what you put in your mouth. Lack of control. You're given to appetite. Your human appetite, that means your, your, your uh, oh, what you put in your stomach, what you put in your mouth, you know, your taste buds. And then there's that appetite of the body. Ooh, I got to have a little bit of that. I got, some of y'all got 100 pairs of shoes. Wear only 20 of them or five of them. And the rest are up there decorating your closet. We are given to appetites. And we don't realize how those are so distracting from the things of God. So distracting. They're not sinful, but they can be. Depends on how much value you place on them. Okay, I'm feeling like I'm done. So I can go on and on ad infinitum because I'm Gabby like that. I'm a blabbermouth but I'm not going to abuse the privilege of, of speaking God's word by just flapping off. So I ask you to just think, think, pray, do a self analysis, do a self assessment. Where are you? What are you allowing that God really would, what, what are you saying to us that you wouldn't say to God? Mm. What are you saying to your buddies and doing around them that you would never dare if Jesus walked in the room? Right. If you thought the rapture was coming right now, you'd stop what you were doing real quick, wouldn't you? If you got to stop what you're doing, baby, now's the time to stop. Not then. It's too late once he arrives. It's just too late. Okay. Anyway, God bless you. And... Don't let the devil sift you as wheat. Please don't do that. You're not his patsy. You're not his little booty call. You're not his plaything. Get up out of his space and quit warming yourself by his fire and get back in the ways of God. When you are living a holy life and you're doing the best you can to, you, you force your taste to adjust. You change what you eat. You change what you listen to. You change what you do. You change what you wear. 
and you change what goes in your spirit. And the more you work on that, the more you will enjoy the good foods, not the bad. Yeah, your taste buds will change as well. Bear much fruit. Now, I don't want to be the one that Jesus says, some 30, some 60, some 100, and he talks about me as 30. No, I want to be closer to the 100. Don't you? Or is this world and all its little goodies just a little too much fun for you to give up? 